The fate of Battlefield 2042 looks more and more dire by the day. Things didn't kick off strong with Steam reviews being mostly negative, the meta score, both from critics and user reviews, being lower even by Battlefield standards. And then it doesn't help matters that Battlefield 2042 currently is seeing less players than the older entry, Battlefield 5. Battlefield 2042's 24-hour peak as of the recording of this video was at roughly 12,000 players, whereas with Battlefield 5, that number is significantly higher at almost 24 thousand players so this is bad i mean battlefield 5 isn't peak battlefield per se but it's still a lot better than the utter disaster that is battlefield 2042 which is not only buggy and has a host of technical issues and is lacking in content and overall feels incomplete the game also is lacking in very basic features and it feels like a step in the wrong direction with many feeling like 2042 doesn't necessarily even feel like a battlefield game and this mass exodus of players Players is negatively impacting the game's matchmaking features as well as its portal mode which is the one saving grace of the game that cannot find enough players for the feature to be useful or for it to be tenable. This has in large part to do with the fact that Portal's XP earning has been disabled because tons of players would set up servers strictly to farm XP instead of using the mode how it's meant to be. So instead of resolving the XP farming issue, they have instead disabled XP earning outright, and because of a lack of progression with that mode, a lot of players just aren't engaging with it compared to other game features. And uh, the sales of this game don't seem particularly great either, judging by the fact that already a brand new copy of the game can be found in game stores for as low as $5 when the original price was a whopping $70. There recently was a major shakeup as far as the Battlefield franchise and DICE is concerned, with uh, DICE GM Oscar Gabrielson leaving the company, Respawn's Vince Zampella, who has a really good track record as a developer, taking on a bigger role as the new overall boss of the Battlefield franchise, and Halo designer Marcus Leto now building a new development team in Seattle focused on injecting more storytelling into the Battlefield universe. On top of the fact that Leto's new studio Ripple Effect will work together to expand upon and improve Battlefield 2042. A shakeup is definitely needed for the studio and the franchise, but the short-term future doesn't look encouraging, judging by how the first season of Battlefield 2042 is coming in on March of 2022, which is much later than there should be. People were hoping for January at the latest. And then the latest news has fans even more worried about developers' inability to seemingly listen to the community. As reported by Battlefield Bulletin here, EA DICE has removed Battlefield 2042 Rush game mode from the featured portal experiences despite community's feedback to make it permanent. So every once in a while as part of the featured portal playlist, they'll introduce game modes like Rush. And for those who don't know what Rush is, it is a mode in which one team defends two MCOM stations while the other team attempts to plant charges on them. Once a charge is planted, it can be diffused if the defending team acts quickly. This has been a staple of the Battlefield series, and maybe the rotational way in which they're introducing modes would go down much better if Battlefield 2042 had shipped with a bunch of content with the base package, but a lot of people feel like this entry is lacking in maps, in guns, you name it, whereas Previous Battlefield entries felt much more feature-rich at launch, so Battlefield 2042 is starving for content. Rush is a bit of content that people are genuinely enjoying about Battlefield 2042, and EA DICE's decision, instead of keeping it there permanently given the state of the game, is to remove the feature outright as originally planned, despite community's feedback that the permanence of Rush is currently much needed and much desired. This kind of reminds me of how Anthem at one point had this bug that enhanced the rate at which loot was doled out, and fans were like, wait, 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 whoa, Bioware, don't fix this. This is actually a good thing, loot at this rate makes the game feel a lot better, a lot more enjoyable to play. Bioware didn't listen, decided to fix the bug that actually turned out to be a good feature and regress the game back to what it used to be. These companies are so stubborn to deviate from their initial plans when it comes to unplanned game features, but when it comes to monetization, they're willing to deviate games whichever way it's needed to pave the road for 
the additional forms of monetization and business schemes that allow them to nickel and dime players. But yeah, the removal of the fan favorite rush mode is something that's being reported on quite a bit. The removal comes despite the positive reception towards the mode and calls to keep it in the game permanently. It's one of the few things about this game that people are praising and they somehow think that the best thing for the long-term future of this game is to remove one of the few things that this game is being complimented for. Feature experiences are designed to be changed regularly to keep the game fresh, but Rush has been a staple of the franchise for quite some time, so its removal is unusual. That goes doubly true when it's mass requested by the community during a time when Battlefield 2042 could use as much content as it can muster. Players will still be able to play Rush on custom portal servers, but XP progression is capped in portal to prevent XP farming lobbies that plagued the game during launch. So the most Mode isn't removed outright, but to engage with it, you have to play in a way that will not grant you experience points that will not contribute towards the progression of the game, as Rush is now strictly featured as part of custom portal servers rather than the official playlist. So this has made the community feel like they're not being listened to, and it's caused further frustrations across social media and forums, not helped by the fact that this is all during a time when the game continues to be mired with bugs and core design problems some players believe need to be prioritized. Instead, it feels like EA's marketing is focusing more on adding lore to Battlefield 2042. Here's the tweet in question that tries to do that. It was just supposed to be another day at Tanjong Beach until the Battle of Brownie Island crashed ashore. But the thing is, at this stage, it feels impossible to feel invested in or to feel compelled by the lore and the setting of Battlefield 2042, which has a cool setup but is not utilized to its full extent, especially with in-game characters not taking the war-ravaged environmental cataclysmic world that this takes place in seriously with lines like this being doled out at the end of matches and the like. Oh, you know, I think I pulled something back there. Well, 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 that was fun. Ha, I told you. <laughs> the ha, I told you. Yeah, that gets me every time. But yeah, it feels like these characters know they're in a video game or it feels like, you know, they're excited to go play laser tag instead of, you know, go out there and, you know, fight for their nation in this war-torn, environmentally ravaged setting. So this newfound focus on the lore and the story of Battlefield 2042 already feels like a wasted opportunity, already feels like too little too late. And the backlash surrounding Battlefield 2042 slow post-launch developments and updates and fixes and surrounding the seeming lack of listening on the part of uh, Battlefield 2042 developers and just the general lack of communication wasn't helped by a series of tweets that Andy McNamara, EA's global director of integrated comms, posted that only drew further backlash because of the way the tweets were worded. These have since been deleted, but Eurogamer saved a screenshot of the tweets that read, Back to work today, check Reddit and Twitter, and Battlefield fans are pissed we didn't do enough updates or communication during the holiday break. Guys, people got rest. We have things in motion, but we have to figure out what is possible. We will address it when we're at 100%. Let us get back from break and get back to work. Love you guys, but these ex expectations are brutal. That's the quote that really rubbed people the wrong way. The things you want take time to scope, design, and execute. Look, on one hand, I do sympathize with the developers in that it wasn't their fault that the game was rushed to launch. It was up to management, the leaders, the creative heads to decide that this game needed a delay. The developers and, you know, the head of global communications, these are not people who are directly responsible for the rushing of a game. They did their best in the circumstances that they were given. So a lot of the anger to ground floor developers, I think, is woefully misdirected. And these developers do need a break and they cannot work miracles. They cannot just fix everything in the span of, you know, a month because of just how broken this game is at launch. On the other hand, it's important for developers to understand the user side of things, the player side of things, where they did spend a significant chunk of money, 60 to $70 for the base game, a lot more, up to $100 or more if you bought the more expensive editions in the hopes that this game would ship as advertised, that it would be the ultimate Battlefield experience and that they could go into the holidays playing this game in a great state and having fun with their friends, but 
the state of Battlefield 2042 at launch led to a whole lot of disappointment and a lot of people feeling like their money was not well spent. And while I can understand that Andy McNamara is saying here that the expectation that ground floor developers will work during the holiday break to fix the game, like that's a brutal expectation and request. It's important for Andy and the team to keep in mind that EA and DICE set expectations with Battlefield 2042's marketing. They said that the game would launch on this day and would be ready by this day. It clearly was not ready and the expectation that a game like this works on a basic level, like even the shooting had all kinds of issues with hit registration and bullet spread that didn't allow for the basic function of the game to be executed properly. The fact that people expected this game to work on a basic level and have the basic fundamental content and design features and gameplay elements that you'd expect out of Battlefield, that's not a high expectation to have. That's just a ground floor base expectation. And so wording this message in such a way where it feels like he's castigating people for having expectations that don't even feel like they're that high where it feels like people just wanted at least this game to work on a fundamental level. It just doesn't feel like the best way to communicate because people are rightly upset about the state of the game, about the money that they spent on an experience that did not meet its promises and what it was marketed to be. I think what this message lacks is some semblance of empathizing with the players and the customers, at the very least understanding why they're upset and that many of them are rightfully upset. Screw the people who are being overly toxic and sending death threats, they deserve to be called out, but there are plenty of people who are maybe harshly, but just honestly and constructively expressing that this is not acceptable. And so Andy coming out here saying these expectations you're placing on us are brutal without on some level saying we understand your position as well, I think is what's giving people the impression that he's saying, think about the developers without the developers thinking about how the players and the community are feeling right now. The message feels like it's saying, whoa, be reasonable, guys. When customers feel like the way EA and DICE have sold this game, the way they've marketed this game, and the way they've happily accepted money from people who bought an unfinished broken product isn't a reasonable situation for them. I think a lot of these players and ultimately customers are feeling like they're expected to be reasonable when game companies are not treating customers reasonably. Now Andy did eventually delete those tweets saying that my message wasn't clear, apologies, but that didn't stop community forums like the official Battlefield 2042 subreddit from picking this up and users certainly didn't hold back on their feedback regarding this series of tweets. The only thing brutal is EA charging for early access the game, then for can stop releasing broken shit at the end of Q4. Again, this isn't Andy's fault or the ground floor developer's fault that the game had this set release date that the ground floor developers had to adhere to, but I do agree that the worst thing you can do for a game that you know will launch broken and unfinished is to launch it right before developers go on break, a time period in which a game will remain broken and unfinished. And then there are plenty of people here noting how the stuff that people are asking for right now are some of the most basic features that are lacking in this game. A scoreboard, classes, voice comms, portal weapons into AOW. Scoreboard and voice chat have been two points of contention. That's one area where a lot of people are baffled that such basic features of competitive first-person shooter games would not be present in a release as big as this in a freaking Battlefield game. But yeah, a lot of people picking up on the expectations are brutal bit. The game is freaking broken. Forget scoreboard, voice chat, classes, and every other legacy feature. Legacy features, how they called those basic missing features. Release the game where I don't encounter a game-breaking glitch three times a game. And then scrolling further down, you've got people expressing the impression that it feels like the developers are complaining about customers being too demanding and having too many expectations when the expectation of a finished uh, high quality product at launch should be par for the course and shouldn't be something that we should be constantly demanding with every broken game release. Dice Logic received feedback after the reveal event that most Battlefield gamers do not like the scrapping of classes. Proceed with the design decision anyway. Number two, launch buggy beta. Claim that the beta build is old and launch is going to be different. Number three, launch the game in a terrible state right before Christmas after fixing some of the most game breaking bugs. Go to vacation for three weeks without vocally addressing critical feedback from the community. And four, return to work to complain about your paying customers being too demanding after having to deal with a buggy launch plus 
communication blackout when it feels like given how the studio and the publisher launched Battlefield 2042, they're in no position to be wagging the finger at anyone. Beyond community members, major content creators also chimed in. Popular Battlefield YouTuber Flackfire said, the best time to delete these tweets was after sending them. The second best time is now. We're not expecting this in the next two months. We have been expecting it for the last three years. The game, that is, and all of its promises. What you're listing are core pillars of Battlefield, which were abandoned in favor of something we didn't ask for. So yeah, in general, Andy's series of tweets just didn't go down well with the community. Even the apology is getting its own fair share of feedback with people saying, you know what you meant to say. The message seemed pretty clear to me. I think some of the feedback is being a bit too harsh on Andy. What he is trying to say is that the developers, the ground floor developers in particular, can't work miracles. And there are some decisions that are just not, you know, in his pay grade or in the ground floor developers pay grade. But still, there is a way to communicate during a time when a community is rightly upset. And I don't think Andy's approach was the correct one, especially during a time when the Battlefield 2042 community feel like they're not being listened to, especially after the removal of the rush game mode from the featured portal experiences, despite community's feedback to make it permanent. The fact that even with that feedback, the decision was ultimately to remove the mode from the game and to make an obviously wrong decision. I mean, it's just an incredibly frustrating thing to see unfold. I can certainly understand that. It doesn't come as a surprise to me that this thread, whose sarcastic headline reads, Dice listening to the community again, God, over 13,000, almost 14,000 upvotes in a day. It can be baffling to watch a company continuously make one wrong decision after another, which is why responses read along the lines of, what's that? You like the one redeemable aspect of our crap game? Too bad it's gone. Buy our crappy skins for our stupid specialists instead. People continue to bring up and make fun of the whole brutal expectations quote. You and your brutal expectations. Brutal expectations is already a new running joke on this sub, and I'm all for it. Somebody else pointing out something similar having happened in previous Battlefield games, and they do the same with Frontline and Battlefield 5. You can't get attached to any game mode that isn't Conquest with the current devs. Others expressing their frustration at the lack of listening on the part of developers. Listening to the community is a legacy feature. Many people expressing their desire to get a refund. Holy crap, I want a refund so bad. You and me both and probably thousands of others. Haha. Ha. And then more poking fun at the brutal request. Quote, making rush permanent is a brutal request. Are you guys crazy? Here's another post that's been getting some traction of somebody just requesting some kind of roadmap, some kind of idea for what future plans look like. Hey, I think it's time Time to reveal your plans for future content or even just a general idea of a roadmap. I spent $95 on this game and to say I feel scammed is an understatement. Player base is declining rapidly and with my 75 hours on the game it feels like I've played through all the content in the game multiple times. I've defended this game for a while but it's safe to say that was a mistake. We need something new. Other posts scoff at the notion that players have brutal expectations by highlighting just how much is missing from Battlefield 2042 or how much has been downgraded compared to past entries. And I've been through this list before. I'm not going to go through it again, but you can get a pretty good idea just by scrolling down a bit. Just about every facet of the game feels like it's a regression. Now, the backlash surrounding Battlefield 2042 has gone bad enough that the moderators for the Battlefield 2042 subreddit are considering and laying out the possibility of potentially going on lockdown for a bit because of just how toxic the discourse has gotten. This was expressed in a message shared via this post whose headline reads, a message from the mod team. You can already tell based on the upvote count and the ratio here that this has not been particularly well received. Received, but here's how the letter reads or the message. Over the past few days, we have seen insults, harassment, and vile comments directed towards members of our community and DICE employees. We're making this statement to give you fair warning that we will not tolerate this anymore. We're letting you know what your options are in regards to how this subreddit functions in the coming days. It's an understatement when we say that this subreddit has grown incredibly toxic. It's near impossible to have a single discussion without insults being flung around at each other, and it's really starting to harm the entire Battlefield community and each of us that are part of it. 
We mods have always been very laid back as far as moderation goes. We try our best to let everyone's voice be heard, no matter how upset or angry, but we have always been of the position that insults or harassment directed to any individual will never be tolerated. We'll do whatever it takes to drive that sort of toxicity down. If it means shutting down for a period of time, we will. And that prospect has not been going down well with this Reddit community. The mods have an obligation to follow the rules set out by Reddit, and if we're found to be in breach of not enforcing them or doing a poor job at enforcing them, we risk the community getting banned altogether. With that said, here are options we're considering. Option one, if toxicity goes down, we'll leave the subreddit open without further restrictions. Option two, if toxicity stays at current levels, we will begin locking threads early on a majority of posts. And then option three, if toxicity increases, we'll lock down the subreddit for a period of time. The message finally concludes with a pretty blunt quote. The choice is in your hands. If you don't like the options available to you, you're welcome to unsubscribe and create your own community outlet. There's only gotten 24% upvote. People saying stuff like, if you buy a rotten banana at a store, what do you do? If the store keeps selling these, whatever you do, what do you do? Scrolling further down, you'll see posts like, ah, yes, take the dice approach. Cannot be toxic if there is no chat. Then we got people saying, so the game can't be fixed, so you shut down any criticism by members of the community. Well, 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 that was fun. Seems as you guys have some brutal expectations. So, yeah, at this stage, I am definitely expecting that the Battlefield 2042 subreddit will go on lockdown for a bit the discourse does not seem to be getting any lighter now i'd like nothing more than to think that battlefield 2042 is well on its way to a major comeback but the, the state of this game feels even worse than battlefield 5 at launch and that game never fully recovered all we can hope is that this uh shake up of battlefield and dice's leadership as reported here by GameSpot, with vince zampella getting more involved in playing a, a bigger more active role as the boss of the Battlefield franchise. Hopefully, that'll pave the road to a better future. But then you're hearing rumblings about how the next Battlefield game might be a hero shooter, which is the last thing Battlefield fans want out of the franchise, and it's just veering further off into uh, another direction where Battlefield feels like it's going to further lose its identity. And you've got a situation where Battlefield fans uh, really are at their limit in their patience, though only time will tell what the future holds for this troubled IP. Until we hear more, though, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest developments surrounding Battlefield 2042, what the developers have come out and said, along with the fact that the Rush game mode is being removed from the official Portal playlist, despite uh, the universal feedback and request to keep it in permanently, given the lack of content of Battlefield 2042 and it being able to use any content that it can muster. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.